Okay. So uh, today we're going to talk about chapter seven, uh, and this chapter is about bonds and their valuation. Uh, so uh, what is a bond? Uh, a bond is basically a debt instrument, uh, uh, especially used for borrowing uh, large sums of money uh, from the general public who can contribute little amount like you know when when you need some money um like you know a hundred thousand two hundred of a million few million dollars you can go and borrow that from a bank um uh, for for your business uh, but if you need like you know millions and billions of dollars uh then a single bank or maybe a, a consortium of banks would not be in a position to finance all that um uh, you know uh money so you will have to uh build your debt instruments and normally each of these um bond is a thousand dollars value so you sell those bonds to the general public of course through an investment banker um but if i can afford like to invest a thousand dollars i can buy just one bond and invest in the company uh, rather than investing millions and billions of dollars. But when uh, a lot of people make that investment and buy the bonds, the company gets its, its money to uh, to to finance its uh, expansion. Um, and and I uh, uh, get a chance to uh, invest my money. So it's a, basically a debt instrument. There are some features of a bond that we need to understand. Uh, one of these uh, features is what we call the par value. This is the value, or this is also called the face value of the bond. This is often written on the face of the bond, uh, and normally that face value is $1,000. So if I buy the bond, I, I would be, in if it is being sold at face value, I would be investing $1,000. The, the company would receive $1,000. And also remember that when the bond matures, the company will have to re return the $1,000 face value to me. Uh, even I might have bought this bond for a cheaper price, maybe for $900, but when it matures and I return it to the company, they will have to return me the $1,000 par value or face value. So that is very important. Face value or future value will always be uh, that uh, same uh, number. Coupon interest rate is the interest rate that the bond pays. The bond promises to pay. So, for example, if this company uh, promises that, you know, it is written on the bond that um, any investor who buys the bond will receive a 10 percent um, uh, interest or a coupon rate. That means for and if this is a 10 years maturity bond, I buy the bond, I'll be receiving one hundred dollars each year from the company. And when the bond matures at the 10th year, I will also be receiving the face value of the bond. So I'll be receiving the one thousand uh, at, at the future uh, date. Uh, it should have a mentioned uh, written maturity date so it doesn't go forever. Like there are some bonds that are perpetuity, but you know, most of the bonds have a maturity date, uh, maybe five years or 10 years or 15 years. Uh, and at that time, the you will return the bond to the company and the company will return the face value of the bond to you. And in the meantime, over the life of the bond, you have already received the coupon payments at um, the coupon rate. Issue date, of course, uh, no problem with that. Yield to maturity is the rate of return that you would expect to earn if you earn uh, if you buy this bond. Maybe you buy the bond at the beginning, at the issue date, or maybe a few years later. Uh, but whatever return you get uh, uh, from, by uh, from investing in this bond would be called the yield to maturity. And this is the yield if you buy the bond and keep it till maturity. That would be your uh, annualized return. OK, now remember that this U to maturity, uh, this may also be called my required rate of return because I would expect a yield to maturity from bond A. Uh, and if there's another similar bond with similar risk, I would be expecting the same rate from that bond as well. So that would be my required rate of return as well. Um, and this yield to maturity is different from the coupon interest rate. Remember, when the company issues the bond and the coupon rate is 10%, it will always remain 10%. But this yield to maturity changes with changes in the uh, in the market uh, uh, interest rates and also the risk of the company. 
All right. Uh, convertible barns are uh, uh, some barns that can be converted. Initially, they are issued as a debt instrument, especially by new companies, but they also, uh, uh, you know, attach a, um, a condition that, well, you know, if you want, you can convert this bond to the shares of the company at a later date. And that number of shares would be uh, specified or maybe, you know, uh, whatever the terms of condition, uh, terms and conditions. But the bond has the option to be converted into shares in the future. A portable bond is a type of bond which can be put to the company by the investors before the maturity. Remember, I we, we talked about the maturity. So 10 years bond matures in 10 years and you can return it in 10 years at, at, at year 10. But if it is a putable bond, let's say you bought the bonds, like you know, maybe 500 bonds you bought and then you're worried about. So you can, uh, you can sell those bonds in the market as well. Um, if the price goes down or, or up, whatever the case may be. But you also have the option to return this bond to the company. So as an investor, you have the option to return the bond to the company. Okay, uh, there must be some conditions uh, associated with this, but you know, you, you still have the option. Uh, callable bonds are the uh, inverse of the putable. So in the callable bond, the company, the issuer of the bond has the option to call the bonds back. So it is a 10 years maturity bond, for example, but they write this option that if I want, I can call this bond back in five years. So the company has the option to call this bond. As an investor, you don't have the option to return it to the bond. But if the company says, well, return the bond uh, at, at the fifth year, then you will, you will be uh, required to return it. Okay. Well, of course, there will be a price that the company pays. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, through some examples, but that's that's what it means. When we talk about the value of a bond or for that matter, any other asset, it might be anything, it could be a physical asset, a, um, a property or a bond or a stock or anything. The value of the asset is determined by finding the present value of all the future benefits of holding that asset. So, for example, if it is a bond and you receive a coupon amount, for example, $100 in year one and $100 in year two and then so on up to $100 in year 10. This bond matures in 10 years, for example. And at the 10th year, you also receive the face value of the bond, which is normally $1,000. What you do, you find the present value of all of these cash flows. And we know that calculation from our chapter five, where we talked about uh, time value of money. And that total present value would be the current value or the current price of the bond. Well, remember that the price might be different from the value that we calculate. And uh, that's how we make money. Uh, we'll be talking about this in more detail in, in the next chapter as well. Uh, to find the undervalued and, 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 and you know overvalued assets. But that value is a financially um, viable present value that you should be willing to, to pay for. And here's the formula, like for if you want to in, uh, to bring all of these values down to the present one by one. But don't worry about that. We'll ha we have easier calculations to do this. Okay. Any questions so far? All good? Okay. Then moving further, um, uh, we, we need to find the opportunity cost. If you want to invest in a bond, um, what rate of return should you expect? That is what we call the opportunity cost. And uh, recalling our discussion from the previous chapter where we talked about interest rates in, in a lot more detail, uh, we had this formula for calculating the, re the, 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 uh, the interest rate or the required rate. So when I uh, have to find my required rate, I need to consider the um, uh, real risk-free rate. I also add the inflation premium, the maturity risk premium, the default risk premium of the company, and the liquidity premium. And, and based on all of these values, I determine my own required rate of return. So the company might be offering a 10% coupon rate, but my required rate of return from this company might be 15%. 
In that case, I wouldn't buy the bond at its face value because it does not give me the re return uh, that I require. However, if the company discounts this bond, uh, its face value is $1,000, but if they can sell it to me at a cheaper price, then I can consider. And that cheaper price would be something that matches my required rate of return. So we'll talk about that um, uh, through some examples. Uh, another concept that you need to know is the yield to maturity. We just talked about this. Uh, and this is the uh, rate of return that you would earn if you buy the bond and keep it till maturity. So let's say the bond was issued two years ago, so 10 years bond, it still has eight years to maturity. You buy it today, if you keep it uh, till maturity, what rate of return would you be getting uh, from this investment? Let me see somebody joined uh, the class. Let's see. Someone in the waiting room. Okay. Another uh, definition we need to know is the capital gains yield. It can be applied to any investment, any any asset. It could be a house or whatever. Can be applied to bonds and and stocks. So capital gains yield actually is um, a, uh, the percentage return from the price appreciation or depreciation of an asset. Okay, you bought an asset for a hundred dollars, uh, for example. And um, after a year, it goes to $150. So your, um, your percentage return is 50% on this asset. Uh, the formula for calculating the uh, capital gains yield is capital gains yield equal to P2, which is the, 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 the new price minus P1, which is the previous price. And divided by the P1, that is what we were paid for. So that's how you can find the capital gains yield. Okay. So uh, capital gain, when it when you talk about uh, capital gain is the dollar value. But when we say capital gains yield, you actually convert that dollar value to a percentage. Okay. Current yield is basically the uh, uh, the yield that you get from the cash flows of the asset in the current year. So if you bought a bond at $100 and its coupon uh, rate is 10%, that means you receive $100 each year. So if you bought it for $1,000, $1,000 is your investment, uh, and you get $100 each year. So 100 divided by 1,000, which comes out to be 10%, that is your current yield. The yield, the percentage yield from holding the asset for one year. Uh, the, the actual cash flows, excluding the price appreciation or depreciation, okay? The total return, the total yield to maturity would actually be the sum of the two, the current yield plus the um, uh, capital gains yield. So here's the formula for the current yield, the annual coupon payment for a bond divided by the current price of the bond. Capital gains yield would be equal to the change in price divided by the beginning price. That is the formula that I showed you um, earlier. An expected total return, which we also call the yield to maturity, would be the sum of the two, the current yield plus the capital gains yield. So that is another formula we need to, uh, to remember. Okay, here's just a simple example, for example. Um, now here's the, this bond, the face value of the bond is $1,000, but you bought it at $887. Okay, so you bought it at a uh, price which, which is less than its face value. That is current market price, okay? Uh, the bond uh, pays 9% annual coupon. So that means uh, you will be receiving 9% of the face value. Remember, 9% of the face value is the coupon amount. That comes out to be $990. So your current yield would be equal to the $90 cash flow from the interest payment divided by the price that you paid for it. You paid $887. So your current yield is 10.15% uh, from, uh, from the uh, interest payment for the year. Uh, now, here's another example. Um, what is the, uh, the uh, capital gains yield of a bond with yield to maturity of 10.91% and current yield of this? So it's actually, we have this formula, yield to maturity, which is the total return. 
that is equal to the current yield plus the capital gains yield. Now the question asks me to find the capital gains yield. I can rearrange the formula so the capital gains yield would become uh, uh, yield to maturity minus the current yield. Uh, the data has been given to me. Yield to maturity is 10.91% minus the current yield is 10.15%. So the capital gains yield is 0.76%. Uh, that is um, the return as a result of the appreciation in the price of the asset. OK, when is um, a call likely to happen? Um, so I told you there, there are some bonds which are called callable bonds. That means the company has the option to call the bond back before its maturity at a certain point in time. Why would a company call a bond back? The reason could be like, for example, um, uh, the company issued the bond five years, five years ago, OK? And at that time, the interest rate was very high. Um, so uh, they offered a coupon rate of 20%. But now, this is a 10 years bond, but now after five years, uh, the interest rates have gone down to 10%, which means that this company, if they want, they can issue a new bond and pay 10% coupon rate instead of paying 20% coupon rate. And if they have the call option, the best um, uh, you know, scenario for them is to call the previous bond back for which they are paying 20%, call it back and issue a new bond uh, at 10% interest rate. So if the market interest rate is less than the coupon rate, then the call is likely to happen. The company will most likely recall, um, you know, uh, the bond. But if the market interest rate is higher than the coupon rate, then the call will not happen. OK, let's say the company issued that bond at 5% interest rate um, five years ago. Now the interest rate have gone up to 15%. Um, the, the company is not going to call that bond make because the company is paying only 5% on that bond. If they recall the bond and issue a new bond, they will have to pay 15% because the current market interest rate is 15%. So in that case, the call is not likely to happen. OK, um, bond ratings, this basically measures the default risk. This is the uh, default risk premium that we talked about in the previous chapter, uh, and that depends on, on the company. Uh, and how do we find whether a company is more risky or less risky? Uh, there are two major rating agencies, Moody's and S&P, and they uh, rate these different bonds. So, for example, the best bonds that the top notch companies are AAA bonds. OK, and then you have got these other ratings, the uh, BA or the C bonds, for example, these are the junk bonds. And of course, those will have will offer a very high interest rate, maybe 30, 40, 45 uh, percent interest rate because they are highly risky, but the secure, highly established, um, you know, uh, top companies they will be offering maybe like you know um, uh, uh, compared to the to the junk bonds they will be offering a very low return but the the thing is that they are safe or the investment is safe. Um, any question so far? No, thank you. All right, fantastic. Now let's jump on and solve some some problems. Okay. Um, so I have selected a few problems for you, and I also picked up some problems from your assignment. OK, um, I'll not be sharing this template with you because uh, I want everybody to watch, even those who uh, did not attend the class, to watch the video and build the template themselves. So just you, you have to work a little bit and try to understand how it works. OK, but I'll share the video recording. Now here's a simple question. What is the value or the current value of a 10 year 10% uh, annual coupon bond? OK. Uh, if RD now in this case, this RD is the required rate of on the debt or the uh, um, uh, you know, the, the, the interest rate that the market requires for this investment. And that 10% is also the coupon rate. So the company pays 10%. If you see, there is no face value mentioned for this bond. Uh, and as I said before, 
then the usual face value is a thousand dollars. So when you get a problem and there's no mention of the face value, that should be a thousand dollars unless otherwise mentioned. OK. So we will assume that is a thousand dollars. So let's write down that formula. Uh, uh, the time to maturity N is 10. So let me call that uh, uh, N P E R, which is like, you know, uh, the, the, the the function. Uh, the term that Excel uses. So number of periods is 10, 10 years to maturity. And the future value or the face value of the bond, which is $1,000. Remember, this is what we get at maturity. All right. Coupon rate is 10%. Uh, so I call that CR, coupon rate. Yield to maturity or the required rate of return is 10%. So that is the RD right here. The, uh, the rate on the debt, the market rate on this particular um, type of uh, debt. Uh, and the coupon amount, this the, the, the coupon amount can be calculated. Of course, they, uh, they pay 10% coupon rate. So coupon amount would be equal to the coupon rate, which is 10% multiplied by the face value. That coupon rate, remember, it is paid based on the face value of the bond. So multiplied by $1,000, that comes out to be $100. And what that means is that this is the regular $100 payment that I will be receiving um, uh, as long as I hold the bond. OK, how do I find the present value? This is the simple thing that we did in our chapter five, simple present value formula. You can also use your calculator. So equals to present value, it is asking for the rate. And that is the rate that we require. Remember, not the coupon rate, the rate that we require. In this particular example, the two rates are the same uh, by incident, but they are not going to be the same uh, in all cases. So the, the required rate is 10%, comma, number of periods is 10, comma, payment. That payment is the annual payment I'll be receiving, the annual interest payment, and that is $100 in this case. And comma, the future value. That future value is basically the face value that I will receive when the bond matures. So I write that down. Type, if you can recall, that is the uh, beginning or the uh, end of the parent. So normally, um, the uh, it is the uh, end of the period. So I can simply ignore that type or I can write type zero. Press the enter button. It is the same as the face value of the bond. OK, now look at it here. That means that if I want to buy the bond, now I will have to pay a thousand dollars and its face value is also a thousand dollars. And it is because the company is paying the same coupon rate as the market interest rate. So it should be the face value should be equal to the um, to 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 the uh, current price. Now. If we change this a little bit, you know, pretty much similar uh, problem, but uh, the only difference is that the um, uh, the coupon rate of this bond. What is you know? Let me read that problem to you. What is the value of a ten-year bond? So that's again that same ten years, uh, outstanding uh, with the same risk. Same risk means that I require the same rate of return. I require the same yield to maturity from this bond too, uh, which is the same like 10% in the previous problem. OK, so required rate of return is still 10% for me. But this this bond pays 13% annual coupon rate. The previous one was paying 10% coupon rate. This one is paying 13% coupon rate. So that coupon rate is 13%. OK, what will be my coupon payment? Of course, that coupon payment would be 13 percent, which is the coupon rate multiplied by the face value of the bond, which is a thousand dollars. So that comes out to one hundred and thirty dollars. Um, so as compared to the previous bond where I was receiving one hundred dollars each year, now I'm receiving one hundred and thirty. OK. Now, if I have to buy the bond right now, uh, its price should be equal to PV, uh, present value, number of periods, uh, sorry, rate. Remember, it should not be the coupon rate. It should be the rate that I require because I want to find its price. And that price should be based on my required rate. That is 10%, comma, number of periods is 10, comma, the annual payment that I will receive is uh, 130, uh, comma, future value will always be the same thousand dollars when I return the bond to the company. 
close the parenthesis and I get eleven hundred and eighty four dollars and thirty four cents. So that means if I have to buy this bond, OK, uh, the, the, the price is going to be more than the face value. And the reason is that this company pays more interest rate to the investors than the previous one, more than the market rate. The market rate is 10%, but this company pays 13%. That is why they're not going to sell their bond at $1,000 because they are paying higher interest rate than the market. Let me see somebody is trying to join. Mm, okay, all good. If you have any questions, please stop me. Now, one of the things, and this might be uh, some you know, conceptual questions that you can expect in your exam. So you can see uh, this, this bond is being sold at a higher price than its face value. And we call that this is a premium bond. What do we call this? Premium bond, because it is being sold at a premium. The uh, at a premium, and how much is the premium? The premium is the difference between uh, the uh, current price minus its face value. So if you find that difference, it is one hundred and eighty four dollars and thirty four cents. So that is the premium that we pay in order to buy this bond. So when the coupon rate of the bond is more than the market interest rate, the bond will be sold at a premium. OK, and when the coupon rate is the same as the market interest rate is in our previous problem, the bond will be sold at its face value or its par value. But when the bond, the, the, the market interest rate, like in the next problem, the market interest rate is more than the coupon rate, then the bond will be sold at a discount. Discount means that is being sold at a price less than uh, its face value. So the next problem is the same problem, but the only difference is that the um, the yield to maturity is 10% and the coupon rate that this bond pays is 7%. Okay. Uh, you can reconstruct that one yourself, but here what we, th this bond is called a discount bond and how much is the discount? Discount of this bond is equal to let me make these two values positive. So the market price minus the um, uh, the face value that is a negative one hundred thirty four dollars in uh, thirty four cents. So that means I, I get a discount. And why why do I buy this bond cheaper? Because this bond pays me less than the current market price. You see market market uh, interest rate is 10%, but the bond pays me 7%. That's why I require, as an investor, I require a discount. Okay, next one. It is the same pro uh, similar problem, um, uh, but uh, the thing is that uh, we have a semi-annual payment. So what is the value of a 10-year 10% uh, semi-annual coupon bond? Uh, and the discount rate, the re required rate of return or the yield to maturity is 13%. Okay, now the thing here is that I have time to maturity uh, of 20 years. Uh, so let me, not, not time to maturity, let me, let me write it as uh, years, um, years to maturity are 10. Okay, uh, because this is a 10 years bond. But uh, periods to maturity, number of periods to maturity, uh, if the years are denoted by N, for example, and the number of periods to maturity are NPER, how many periods do we have? 20, because this is a 10 years bond and the coupon is paid semi-annually, so there will be Instead of 10 coupons, I'll be receiving 20 coupons. Of course, the coupon amount will be half, but I'll be receiving 20 coupons after um, every six months. So the number of periods would be 20 in this case. The face value of the bond or the par value is still the same, $1,000. In coupon rate, remember, this is a 10% um, uh, uh, bond, but that 10% is the annual coupon, remember, okay? 
that is one thing that we need to uh, remember, let me uh, uh, write that down right here. Shift was down. So let me write the annual. When Whenever a problem mentions, mentions the coupon rate, it should be the annual coupon rate, unless otherwise mentioned. Annual coupon. Coupon rate. Coupon rate, and let me call that annual uh, is 10 percent but uh, the periodic coupon rate coupon rate uh, let me call this periodic uh, that is equal to of course this will be half of the annual this is 10 person. This should be a percentage 10 person. So uh, the periodic would be equal to the annual coupon rate divided by two. That comes out to be 5%. Yes. Uh, and yield to maturity is 13%. So that is my required rate of return, 13%. Okay, remember that this 13% uh, is the annual required rate of return. OK. What would be the price of this bond? So if I have this uh, required rate of return on annual basis, I can also convert this into um, a six monthly required rate. OK, so yield to maturity. Annual. And then uh, periodic yield to maturity. Okay, uh, I can also change this one and write that annual in the beginning. And this one is periodic. So the periodic yield to maturity would be equal to the annual yield to maturity, which is 13% divided by two. That is 6.5%. And coupon uh, amount, of course, this coupon amount, remember that coupon is paid on a, a semi-annual um, basis. So this will be equal to the semi-annual coupon rate, which is 5% right here, multiplied by the face value of the bond equals to $50. So instead of $100, which is the annual coupon amount, I'll be receiving $50 after every six months. Okay. In order to calculate the present value of the bond, that present value would be equal to PV. Now, remember, that here Excel, when, when you enter the rate, it does not know what you mean by wh whether that is a monthly rate or an annual rate. It takes it per period. So we have to give it the periodic value. Same goes with your calculator. So when, when, it, when we give it the rate, it should be the periodic uh, required rate of return. Remember, when we do the discounting, it should be based on, not on the coupon rate, but the required rate, which is the uh, yield to maturity. So the periodic yield to maturity is 6.5%, comma, number of periods. This is a 10 years bond, but the number of periods are 20, comma, payment. This should be the payment that I receive per period, and that is equal to $50 every six months. And comma, face value. The face value will be the same, $1,000. It does not change uh, whether that is the periodic, pay, the six monthly or annual payment. So I close the parenthesis, and I get the price as um, $834.72. Good so far? Yes. Um, right. I'm sorry. Sure. Why 
why we divide the annual coupon rate uh, and uh, it mentioned like is 10% already semi-annual coupon, so we mm -hmm. should double it or uh, we should? What? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what that means actually is if, if I uh, receive 10%, if I promise that I will, I'll be paying you 10% per year, but then you require the payment to be on six monthly basis. I cannot pay 10% every six months because that will be double the amount. I'll be paying you half of the total annual payment. So if the annual payment is 10%, I'll be paying you 5% if you require the payment to be every six months. You got my point? Yes, but uh, it's shown like is already like uh, shown here 10% semi-annual. So should we, we need like to divide it again? So it's not already calculated. So the, yeah, the 10% is annual coupon rate. So the bond pays 10% uh coupon rate but that is on the annual basis so if the payment is made every six months of course that rate will become half for every six months the rate would be half of the 10 percent. so 10 percent divided by two so i'll be receiving uh five percent um, of the face value which comes out to be fifty dollars you see ten percent of ten percent of the one thousand dollars is a hundred dollars. So if if they pay a hundred dollars every year, uh, and I require them, uh, I ask them, hey, you know what? Pay me every six months rather than yearly. So they will say, okay, fine, but I'll pay you half of that. I'll pay you um, half of that uh, hundred dollars. Make sense? Yeah. So that is how how it works. The coupon rate becomes uh, five percent in this case clear yes just uh, or, more, like 10 percent semi-annual make me confused like i thought is already calculated like 10 percent means just for six months uh, okay so that is that is one of the things that you need to remember in these formulas when when when, when they mention the the coupon rate in the problem uh so you you are okay i i got your confusion so yes uh, I, and, and and you need and you need to be a little clear. This this is something that um, you know um, when I was trying to learn, uh, I also had some confusion on this. So that ten percent is the coupon rate, but it is always annual. When it talks about semi semi annual, that means the coupon is paid on a semi annual basis. Yeah. So I understand your make confusion. Difference now. Okay. OK, that, that's a good question that you asked. OK, so remember, in every problem, when they say 10 percent coup, you know, um, coupon bond, even if they don't say annual, that will be an annual um, uh, percentage. You will have to convert it into a percentage, uh, a periodic percentage yourself. Thank you for asking. That was a good question. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and by the way, when I when I uh, am working here, I cannot see your faces who is talking, but I think that was Amen, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, OK. OK, now next one. A pretty similar problem. I mean, uh, no, no big deal. Uh, Madison Motors bonds have six years remaining to maturity. So we have uh, n or number of peers is six. Interest is paid annually. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the semi-annual stuff. Uh, and they have a thousand dollars par value. Now in this problem, they mention the par value, but even if they don't, it's going to be $1,000 by default. And the coupon interest rate is 12%, so that is 12% noted down right here. Uh, the yield to maturity, which is the required rate of return, or the market interest rate, that is 14%. Uh, what is the price of the bond? So we simply need to find the uh, price. But in this case, we also need the payment how much would be the payment? Of course, the, the annual payment and annual interest payment would be equal to 
the coupon rate, which is 12%, multiplied by the uh, face value. Okay, now remember, when we find the coupon amount, it should always be based on the coupon rate multiplied by the face value. And when we talk about, when we do the calculations in the formula, we will be using the yield to maturity or the required rate of return or the market interest rate, whatever they may call it in the problem. Okay, so that is $120. Uh, and then you do the calculations equals to PV, the same thing. A rate is, uh, and remember that rate should be the yield to maturity. If you use the wrong rate, level, for example, if you use the 12% right here, you'll get the wrong answer. Number of periods are six. Payment is 120. Uh, face value or future value is uh, 1,000. And you got it. And that is uh, uh, $922. So this bond is being sold at a discount. And the reason is that the market interest rate is higher than the, uh, the rate that the bond pays. Going to the next problem. A bond has $1,000 par value. So fine, I have noted that down. 12 years to maturity, so uh, N is 12, uh, and a 9% annual coupon. So 9% is the annual coupon rate. And it sells for $1,110. Uh, $1, so it is being sold at a premium. When the bond is being sold at a premium, that means that the bond's coupon rate is more than the market interest rate. Okay, question A, what is the yield to maturity? So they have not given us the yield to maturity. We have to find it. And that yield to maturity is actually the rate uh, that we use in our formula. So um, the uh, uh, current price is given uh, 100, uh, $1,110. And the annual payment, of course, would be equal to the coupon rate, 9%, multiplied by the uh, face value. All right. And uh, the, uh, the rate, the yield to maturity would be equal to the rate formula that we learned in chapter um, in chapter five. So it is asking for the number of periods, which is um, 12, comma, payment, that is $90 every year, comma, present value and future value. Now remember, this formula requires present value and future value both from us. And when we enter, one of them must be negative. Otherwise, we will get a, an error. Let us let let me not give it a negative value and see what happens. So present value, uh, present value is the current price, right? So that is this one. And comma, future value. This is the face value that I will receive at, uh, uh, at the future. Forget about the type in the guess. Uh, close the parenthesis and enter. I get a problem right here. Reason being that I gave both of these present value and future value as positive numbers. So what I need to do, um, I need to make one of them negative. So let me put a negative right here in the formula in, in front of either the present value or the future value. So I get a correct answer. Now the yield to maturity is 7.57%. Uh, and of course that is less than, uh, that, that is less than the uh, coupon rate. That is why the bond is being sold at um, at a premium right here. Um, uh, over there. OK, now the next question is that assume that the yield to maturity remains constant for the next two years. What will be the price of the bond two years from today? So we do we need to do the same calculations. Uh, but now we have the rate which we just calculated that that is the rate that we're going to use in the formula. And uh, we're, we're required to find the um, the price two years from today. Now, uh, right now, there are 12 years to maturity, but two years from today, there will be 10 years to maturity, right? So let's start doing that. Uh, present value after two years would be equal to, equals to uh, present value after two years. Uh, we need to give it the rate. Remember, the rate is the required rate of return, which I just calculated comma, the number of periods. How many number do we have? Uh, that is uh, 12 minus 2. Or you can just write down 10. Or you can do 10 my, uh, 12 minus 2, comma, uh, payment. Payment is $90, comma, future value. That is $1,000. You close the parenthesis and you got your answer. 
So uh, the uh, price of the bond after um, two years would be uh, $1,097. Remember that the price of the bond is going down gradually. And at maturity, remember, at maturity, the price of the bond would be uh, the same as the face value. So it converges to, uh, to the face value. All good? So now this is a this is a question from your assignment. I I did it for you. Uh, it is not nothing complicated, but just just doing like you know a, a number of calculations. Uh, the uh, and, and trying to understand a couple of uh, other concepts as well. Uh, an investor purchased the following five bonds. Each bond had a par value of one thousand and eleven percent yield to maturity. So both have this required average return eleven percent and one thousand. Uh, all of these bonds. Immediately after the investor purchased them, interest rates fell. The market interest rate went down. And each then had a new yield to maturity of 6%. Now that 6% is actually the new market interest rate. When I bought it, I the inter market interest rate was 11%, but then right away it went down to 6%. So what is the percentage change in price? for each bond so the the price will the price of the bonds will change of course the price of the bond uh, of all of these bonds uh, okay where is that something because i inserted a few rows up there so the uh, next it up so down and control Y. Now we're good. Okay. Uh, the the uh, the price of the bonds would of course be uh, going up because the market interest rate has gone down to six percent, but the bond still pays um, uh, a higher interest rate. Okay. Now what I need to do is to find the present value of these bonds at eleven percent interest rate, which was the uh, required rate when I bought the bond. And I will then find the present value at 6% interest rate. And then find the percentage difference uh, between the two prices. So now one bond that I bought is a 10 years, 10% annual. That 10% is the coupon rate, remember. And it is 10 years bond, so there are 10 years to maturity. How do I find its present value at 11%? At... Uh, yield to maturity one or 11%. Okay, so I simply do this thing. Equals to uh, present value rate, the discount rate that I'm going to use in my problem, that should, that should be 11%, comma, number of periods how many periods to maturity 10 periods so i write that down comma uh, payment uh, remember this is a 10 percent annual so payment would be equal to 10 percent of the face value and face value is 1010 equals to pv uh, number of periods is 10 i'm sorry interest rate is 11% comma number of periods are 10 comma payment is uh, uh, payment is 10% multiplied by the face value comma future value is of course the face value I close the parentheses and enter it. So I get the price as uh, $941 at 11% discount rate. When I do the same problem uh, at 6%, it should be equal to present value. Uh, interest rate is now 6%. That's the only difference. Rest of the things are the same. Number of periods are still 10 for this bond, comma, Payment is still the same, which is 10% coupon rate. 
multiplied by the face value, which is $1,000, comma, the future value, which again is $1,000. Okay. Close parenthesis, and I get this price. So I found the prices at the two interest rates for this bond. All right. Now, what is the percentage difference? Of course, in order to calculate the percentage difference, I need to find the difference in prices. OK, so that would be the new price minus the old price. Close the parenthesis. OK, and then. Um, uh, divide by. The old price. So that comes out to be thirty seven point five. 4%. That means the price of the bond will go up by $37.54. Uh, uh, sorry, percent. Which means that if I bought this bond uh, at 11% interest rate and all of a sudden interest rate went down, I will be selling my bond at a higher price and getting a return right there. Okay. Uh, the next bond, we will do the same calculations, but that the next bond is a 10 year zero coupon bond. So this bond does not pay any coupon. So the payment in this case would be zero. That's the only difference. OK, payment would be zero. So equals to we do the same calculations equals to present value. Uh, number of periods is 10. Uh, sorry, rate. Rate is 11% in the first scenario, comma, number of periods are 10, comma, payment in this case, because this is a zero coupon barn, so the payment is zero. I just type the zero. And comma, the future value, which is the face value that I will receive, and I close the parenthesis, and that is the price of the bond. Why is this being sold so cheap because this bond does not pay any coupon. I buy it today, I will not receive any payment until maturity. At maturity, I'll be receiving the face value of $1,000, which means I'm investing $352 today, but it, it, in the future, I'll be receiving $1,000. So that difference is my actual uh, interest income. And you will do the same calculations for the 6% interest rate and, and uh, then find the percentage change in the price. OK, so these uh, 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 other three bonds are, uh, you know, uh, same zero coupon bonds, but the maturity is different. So you will be using these values for N. The last one is a dollar hundred perpetuity. Now, perpetuity is a type of bond that never matures. So when it never matures, you will never receive the future value, the face value, right? Uh, but the thing is that you will be receiving the annual coupon payment forever. OK, that's that's the type of, uh, of bond. So if there's a bond that pays, you buy it today. And if you buy it, you'll be receiving $100 every year forever. OK, even if uh, if you um, transfer it as an inheritance to your uh, kids, they will also be receiving that, uh, that money. In that case, Finding the present value formula is very simple. Uh, present value formula, PV of perpetuity. Uh, and I think we, we learned this in chapter five as well. Per P, perpetuity is equal to the payment divided by the interest rate. OK, so it becomes very simple equals to uh, PMT divided by the interest rate, so that is 11%. Oops. No, not PMT. PMT is 100, right? Uh, so the, the, the price is this, okay? And if the interest rate goes down to 6%, uh, the price of the bond will go to that one. So these are the uh, different scenarios that you can look at. All right. Ha, ah, two more questions. Do you still have the energy to continue with me? Everybody, I need a I need a node. Yes, sure. yes Professor. All right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I like I like that energy. Okay. So um next one. <sighs> 
Pelzer Printing Incorporation has bonds outstanding with nine years left to maturity. OK, so nine years to maturity. The bonds have a 9% annual coupon rate. So nine, number uh, years to maturity, nine, and 9% is the coupon rate. What will be the coupon amount? $90, because that's going to be 9% of $1,000. Um, and they were issued one year ago, which is OK, fine. And the face value was $1,000. However, due to changes in interest rates, the bonds market price has fallen to 910 3. So this 910.3 is the current market price or the present value. So I write that down. Market price is equal to present value, and that is 910.3 dollars. The capital gains yield last year was minus 9.8, uh, sorry, 8.97 percent. So last year, capital gains yield was this. Uh, what is the yield to maturity? So basically the interest rate, we need to find the rate yield to maturity. Uh, but for that, we need the payment. So payment would be equal to the coupon rate multiplied by the face value, which comes out to be $90. Yield to maturity would be equal to the rate. So we use the rate formula. Number of periods, which is nine years left to maturity, comma, payment is 90. So OK. Present value is 1000. I'm sorry, 910.0 and future value. Uh, remember, we need to make one of these negative. So let me make that future value as negative and then close the parentheses. Enter. Oh, something is uh, something got wrong. This should not be a negative number. OK, let me do that again. Equals to rate rate number of periods are 9 comma payment is $90 comma present value is 910 okay all right okay so i i get it uh, the present value should be made negative, and I'll I'll tell you why. Minus the present value and the future value. Uh, sorry, present value is the current price, nine hundred and ten, comma uh, uh, the future value, which is one thousand dollars. So that comes out to be eleven percent. Now, reason being is that. Uh, uh, we receive this uh, $1,000 in the future, and we also receive this $90 continuously in the future years. So um, uh, both of these have to be cash inflows in order for the present value to be outflow. So I make the present value, which is a single amount, is a negative value, and the future cash flows are made positive. So present value is negative and future uh, cash flows are positive. So uh, that's why. Uh, I got the error. Now it's 11%. 11% is the yield to maturity, which means that if I buy the bond, I'll be receiving a return of um, 11%. Next uh, part of the question is, uh, for the coming year, what is the expected current yield in capital gains yield? So current yield, if you remember, uh, the formula for current yield is equal to the annual cash flow divided by current yield is equal to uh, annual payment, which cash flow, which is the payment, um, and divided by the price. Okay, that is the formula. So cap uh, current yield uh, should be equal to what is the payment? Uh, annual payment, I receive $90 as interest payment. Then divided by the price that I paid for it, $910. So the um, the, the current yield is 9.89%. And then what is the capital gains yield? So look at this formula, uh, this one, the uh, yield to maturity formula. Yield to maturity is equal to current yield plus capital gains yield. If I have to find the capital gains yield, I will rearrange the formula. So that becomes capital gains yield is equal to yield to maturity minus the current yield. Okay. 
So I can simply uh, find I have the yield to maturity 11% and I have the current yield of 9.89%. 9, uh, 9 so uh, that is how uh, it works. OK, equals to the yield to maturity minus the current yield. Which comes out to be 0.71%. There's another way to do this as well. Uh, because we know that the capital gains yield can also be calculated in this way. Capital gains yield equal to P2, the new price, minus P1, the old price, divided by the P1. So what I need to do is first, if I have to do it this way, I have to uh, find the P2 as well, because I have the P1, but I don't have the P2, okay? Um, So uh, in that case, I'll have to find the present value uh, and uh, using using that information and uh, then then use this formula. But you don't have to do it in, in, in two ways in that case. Uh, it, just one is enough, so you can you can ignore this one. Uh, that one is fine. OK, so um, that is it. Next problem. Last year, Carson Industries issued a 10-year 12% semi-annual. Uh, I mean, same problem as we encountered previously. So that 12% is the annual coupon payment, but the payment is made on a semi-annual basis. So we need to uh, be careful about that. Um, but um, at its uh, par value of 1,000, so uh, we have noted par value or future value is $1,000. Uh, the bond can be called in six years. Now this is a callable bond, okay? Uh, so it can be called in six years, but um, it is a 10-year bond, okay? Uh, and if it is called in six years, uh, at that time, the company will pay $1,060. So that is actually the price that the company is paying for having the option to call it at six year, at the sixth year. So instead of paying the 1000 face value, which they will do uh, if they hold it to maturity, but if they call it in six years, they will be paying not $1,000, but $1,060. So that, that is the incentive for uh, the uh, bondholders to return it, okay? And it sells at, uh, $1,300, so that $1,300 is the current market price. Uh, so that is noted down right here, $1,300. And uh, the value at call, uh, I have written that down, future value at call, that is $1,060. Okay. Uh, what is um, What is the bonds? Uh, nominal yield to maturity and its nominal yield to call. Okay. All right. So uh, why have I written this nine here? The bond was issued last year. Okay, so that's the thing. Last year. Uh, it was a 10-year bond, but it was issued last year. So that's why the uh, years to maturity is nine that is remaining. So that is another like, you know, minor thing that you will have to consider because it was issued last year. OK. Uh, so uh, because it is a semi annual bond, then we need to find the number of periods. The number of periods should be 18 because there are nine years left to maturity and there are two periods in each year. So that simply is nine multiplied by two. Face value is 1000. The annual coupon rate is 12% is mentioned in the problem. Uh, but the monthly, uh, sorry, the six monthly would be uh, 6%. Okay. Uh, current price is given. Uh, coupon amount, semi annual coupon amount. How would that be? The annual coupon is $120, which is 20% of 1000. But semi annual would be equal to 12% multiplied by $1,000 divided by two. So I simply make the coupon as half. That comes out to be $60, okay? Years to call are six. Number of periods to call are 12, okay? Because there are two periods in each year. 
and value it call is one thousand and six dollars. Now let's come to the question. What are the barn's nominal yield to maturity and yield to call? So what that means is that what would be the interest rate one would earn if they hold the bond till maturity? And maturity means like up to nine more years or 18 more periods. And yield to call would be what will they get if the company calls the bond after six years? So yield to maturity. Now, when, when we do the calculations, remember, we have the numbers on a semi-annual basis. So when we get this yield to maturity, that would be a, the semi-annual yield to maturity. That means that would be the six monthly return. The answer that they would be requiring from you in the question would be annual yield to maturity. So in that case, you will have to double it. Now, the semi-annual yield to maturity would be equals to would be equal to rate. We use the rate formula. Number of periods. How many number of periods do we have to maturity? 18 years, comma. Payment. Uh, we will always receive the $60 as payment because that's the semi-annual coupon payment. Uh, present value, let's make that negative because we're also giving it the future value. Present value is the current price, which is 1300, comma, future value, which is $1,000. Forget about the type and guess. So we get 3.69% as the uh, the yield to maturity, but this is semi-annual. In order to make it annual, we will multiply this by two. So that make, means 3.69% uh, multiplied by two. This becomes the annual rate. Now remember, when you do your calculations based on the semi-annual numbers, whatever number you get, like if it is the yield to maturity or if it is the coupon payment, or that would be a semi-annual value. And you will have to, uh, then uh, the, the, the question problem always um, requires you to give that value as annual value. So we'll have to convert this into annual. Um, how about the yield to call? Now, all the values are the same. The only difference is that uh, the, is the number of periods if this bond is being called. We will have 12 years, uh, 12 periods. And also, the future value will not be 1000 but that will be the value at call which is $1060. So let's do the calculations based on that. Equals to rate uh, and now we are talking about the call option if the bond is being called after 6 years. In that case the remaining year the remaining periods to maturity are not 18 these ones but 12 periods are left to the call comma, payment is still going to be the same. You will still continue to receive the $60 payment. Uh, present value is still the same. That is the price that you paid. So I made that negative, uh, and that is still um, the $1,300. Comma, the future value will be different. You will receive, if the bond, bond is called, you will receive $1,060. So I close the parenthesis and enter it. That is the yield to call, but this is again a six monthly rate, so we need to make it double equal to the 3.34 multiplied by two. This will be the annual yield to call, okay? Uh, next problem, next question. Would an investor be more likely to earn yield to call or yield to maturity? So, um, that means if the bond is called, investor would be earning the yield to call, which is 6.68%. But if the bond is held to maturity, the investor would be earning the yield to maturity, which is 7.38%. Now, what do you think? What will the, this company do in this particular case? Look, this yield to maturity is basically the, uh, the market interest rate. What is the market interest rate uh, if it is held to maturity? Uh, uh, that is 7.38%. And how much is the company paying for the bond? They are paying 12%, which means that the company is paying more on this bond than the market interest rate. So it is more likely that the company will exercise the call option because they can call this bond back 
and reissue another bond at a 7.38% interest rate. That will be much cheaper for the company. So the best option for the company is to call the bond back. That means the answer to this question is that investors should expect that the bond will be called. And if the bond is called, they would be earning the yield to call, not the yield to maturity. OK, uh, next question. What is the current yield? Current yield, of course, is uh, equal to. Uh, the uh, um, uh, cash payment, OK? Uh, and remember, this current yield should all, also be on the annual basis, OK? So payment is $60, but that is semi-annual. So we multiply this by two, so that becomes the annual payment. And divided by the current price of the bond. The current price of the bond is $1,300. So 9.23 is the current yield, OK? I've done a couple of more calculations, but I think there's no more question right here to um, to answer. So we we are fine right there. So that's it for today. Um, any questions? Did you mention the practice exam? Uh, I, uh, yeah, so I have posted a practice exam, uh, but that is going to appear on the 20, 25th. OK, thank you. Uh, OK, and another thing like the, the practice, the, the, the uh, exam is going to be quite similar to um, what we have been discussing in the lectures. So like problems like these, uh, problems uh, like the ones you have, um, you know, uh, seen in the assignments exam would be quite similar to those. Uh, and in addition to the numerical problems, you can also expect like conceptual problems. Like for example, you know, um, the ones that we have been discussing throughout the, the the discussions, like you know, what 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 is a premium bond, and um, when can expect an investor expect a uh, a call or something like that. So those will be the types of questions. So it is it is important that you read the chapters in addition to attending the lectures and going through uh, those material. But most of the numerical questions would be quite similar to what you um, go through this. Uh, and, and also note that um, when I um, uh, create the exam, I do keep that time in mind. So uh, I wouldn't give questions that are too much time consuming. Uh, it should be something that you can do in the given time. Very good, because some of these are very lengthy <laughs> when calculating. Yeah, them. these these are. Yeah, but I mean, like when you when you do a little bit practice, it becomes quite easy, like you know, it shouldn't be a big deal. All right, any other question? All right, so. Everybody is good. And uh, again, thank you for joining this um, unexpected class. Uh, I hope you learned something new. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank um, you. Next week, next week would most likely be a Q&A because uh, uh, we covered content until the, the exam one. So if you have any problem question, we can talk about those. Uh, but most likely, and I'll also like you know, depending on I'm still working on your exam one, uh, you know, adding more questions, deleting. So if there is something uh, a need that I feel that you know I have to discuss um, some of those questions with you, then we'll also talk about those. But again, thank you and have a good night. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, perfect night. You're welcome. You're welcome.